Hello and welcome to This Museum's Not Obsolete, another video we're looking at this before we put it into the display setup. We might not be setting it up as an interactive thing and you'll find out why soon, but let's have a look before we even get into any of that uh, about what, what, what this is. What is it? Well, this is called the Magical. It's the auto dialer number 201A. Uh, magical electronic dialer model E2 manufactured by DASA International Limited, Glasgow, Scotland. However, I've seen other ones that are by Bell Labs, so gosh knows. It says it's patented, so there we go. And what this is, is an auto dialer, but it's different to other auto dialers that we looked at. It doesn't use digital chips inside and it doesn't use ferrite core memory like the Soviet one that we looked at as well. This one actually stores an awful lot of numbers. In fact, it stores more than any other auto dialer I've seen of this era even. Uh, of the, the Soviet one, for instance, would only store 40. This stores, oh, I'm gonna hazard a guess as what well, I don't know, 400? 400 numbers? What, what it's got inside is a long roll of film. Uh, it's got a long roll of paper. And if you look here, uh, you can flick it through. You see there's this red line that starts turning up. What that's going to do is, what that does is it goes through and selects the numbers that are down here. So it means you can go through the alphabet. This whole this whole roll has the red white red red line on it. It's a bit rickety right now. And let's go over to W because we're going to record one in. Uh, let's find them. Um, oh, oh, it's nice and blank there. There we go. Oh, we're at, we're at, we're at Y. Oh, we're way back. Let's find them. Oh, it's really full. Here we go. So we've got an empty spot. And um, if we flick this up, we go down to that empty spot. We can write the name of what we're going to call, we're going to call and the number. It says to do it in paper, but I've, I've only got a pen here, so I'm sure it'll be fine. I'm going to write workshop. I'm going to write the number as well. Six, nine, zero, Eight. That's the number for the workshop and we're going to program that in. So now we do, we lower this down and then we try and get that number to go between these two black lines like so. And then we get the this, this is the programmer. We plop it, plug it in the back via this funky connector. Plug it in and um, we press call and this means that we can program it. So we press call now wait until the light turns off. Now let's program in six nine zero eight six nine zero. Where's eight? Here we go. Eight. And then I think that's it. And then what does it say? Press call to end. Uh, when completed, press star button. And then we can unplug this. Now, in theory, it has been programmed. We've programmed it into this. And remember, this can store 400 or so. If I press call, we might be able to hear it blinking uh, 6908. Oh. Wow, I'll bring that closer for you to hear. Are you ready? That's voodoo magic. By the way, you have to undo this so it stops programming. So we've got a number dialed in. What we're going to do now, I'm going to try and plug this into the phone lines. Uh, I've got a wire here. I'm going to see if I can get it extended over to here. Oh, it reaches. Only just reaches. So uh, we're going to try and get it plugged into the phone line now. So now we've got the number saved for this phone right here. We're going to try and call it. I've connected this up to uh, this red phone right here. If you have one of these, you'll notice that there are uh, four separate, uh, six cables coming out of the back of this wire. I've already wired it in, but it's uh, you can find this. The only piece of information is called Technical Troubleshooting Aid. Indiana Distribution, Western Electronic Company for the Magical. This is what comes up, this this piece of uh, documentation. But in here you get a schematic that's uh, for a double-sided part. 
this is part of it. It's very transistorized. There's quite a lot of transistors and there are a few, a couple of resistors and whatnot. And um, it's basically got uh, six wires coming out of this that are plugged into a phone. Right now I'm actually only using two. I'm using the um, red and green, which is the pulse output. But then there's, there's also a blue, white, black and yellow and they're for muting. So there's two pairs for muting out the headset, handsets, but why do you want to mute it out? You want to hear the So uh, let's push the call. Um, we'll, I'll leave it where it is right now and we'll flick through and we can have a look on the inside in a little bit as well. Right, so. Okay, let's call it. Hello? <laughs> it works! It bleeding works! It actually works, it auto dials. So let's open it up and have a look on the inside. I've, uh, I have already taken the screws off, so um, let's have a peek. By the way, when you're calling, you don't want to have this plugged in or it stops itself and waits for you to program it in. Mm, interesting, I haven't actually run, called it yet with with it off. I'm not even sure what the voltages are on this yet, so um, I won't touch it too much. Um, okay, so uh, I'll try and get a close-up of this. I don't want to take this apart too much in this video. You may see it in the future if it breaks, but right now because it works so well, I don't want to take it apart. There's a band here, and if you notice around the back, if we look carefully, we can see there is a tape read head, so I'm going to try and call that number again and we'll see what actually happens when we push call. Very interesting. Let's try that again. I want to see... I want to put this up against... I want to put the actual thing up against uh, the microphone and push it again. just seems to go forward so when you press call it flicks it back springs it back but oh, by loosening that piece of the cam off which ends up bringing the springed uh, the springed belt back and brings the single he tape head back which is a record and write head that records and writes onto this um, this paper which isn't really paper it's basically a fat tape and then it, as you can see, it's only ran up to that point with only four numbers. That was near enough. So you could record a very long number if you really wanted to. It could be an international number and such that is recorded on here. And then, as you can see, as you flick over, you move along the tape. It's probably got quite a wide tape head, so you can actually get a whole, uh, you know, you could. there's a room for error. And then there's obviously a motor. Uh, that will push this backwards and forwards as you can see there's a lot of uh, plastic gears on this side Oop. however some of these are a little bit broken and there is part of the track where it looks like it's seen better days but wow it's quite amazing that this um, off the fur off the bat it's quite amazing that this actually works just works I haven't mentioned yet that the uh, the dial has a little bit of extra extra interestingness inside of it. So this was actually broken up. I had to replace parts of this. In fact, I replaced the whole dial. Initially, the dial that was in it wasn't working. Uh, it seemed like it actually had a damaged governor and it wasn't really doing uh, much. So I decided to swap it. However, the dial that is in here has an extra set of contacts on the back. So I had to replace a bunch of things, screw some stuff back in and also 3D print a part just to make it work. So if you notice on the back of it, when you uh, type a dial, I pull this dial along a little bit, you notice that this piece of metal, this bit of metal goes away from the switch contact. So there's a switch contact here. I've had to 3D print this part 
because it uh, it snapped when I was adjusting it. Um, and it's basically like a slip, a slipping washer kind of thing. It's got a slight bit of friction that pulls this bit of metal backwards, but it doesn't affect it, the actual rotation. So this is a, an extended screw on the back of the rotary dial. And when you wind it, and then you let go, the first thing it does is it flicks this, and this switch apparently tells this um, what what to when to listen so if I um, plug this in to dial in a number you do a very similar thing you just press call and then there's a blank part first is there a shot that we can get that you can see the tape head slightly so it runs through for about well that was about a second so it gives uh, the start of the tape head is empty so it actually makes the call I guess let's get a zero again right here we go. Are you ready? Oh, can you see that? So then it recorded it and then it stopped because I guess it didn't hear any more pulses. So now we can do a seven, let's say. It will record that. And as this is happening, you can see the tape head. We'll do another zero. Flicks forwards and record, records the pulse onto the magnetic tape that doubles up as the actual names on the other side. Obviously they're slightly staggered from this, but wow. I don't want to take this apart any further than this purely because I don't want to break it because it already works. It doesn't need to be opened up and stuff because it blooming works so well, but what a genius machine. What an incredibly amazing machine. Now we've all done this, let's just double check it actually uh, still calls. Now I've done that, let's just double check it actually still calls that number that we programmed in. Right, so let's find that that letter. It was in W. It's getting a bit getting a bit caught now. Yeah, there's a torn part. This is the torn part of it. So just because it's slightly offset, this part it's seen a lot of use. This it would be amazing to find a new. Uh, blank a new blank um, tape for it but that's going to be hard so we're going to flick through get to W we're on workshop that's the one we need so we're going to pop it there pop it into the center of this this is the number that we want to use make sure the actual so we pick up the phone we've made dial we've made dial tone now we're going to press call is amazing obviously if you included those extra wires that came out of the back that I was mentioning if you used those to actually mute out the pulses so you didn't hear the pulses that were coming through here obviously that would be for you know niceties in the time but right now it's really good to be able to hear it and see it so that's amazing isn't it what a machine eh so yeah, that's the magical because of the fragile nature of the tape. This is probably not going to be interactive, but if you want to come to the museum and you really want to see this functioning, then please ask somebody and stuff like that. If you'd like to support the museum, go and check it out over on Patreon. If you'd like to come, then there's some uh, dates at the end of November. And yeah, anyway, that's it. I'm Sam and this is the magical. Have a lovely time.